Today we're going to be building out a Raspberry Pi 5 NAS with the Pi Maroni Base Duo. You're not going to want to miss this because we're also going to include RAID. Let's go. A few months ago, I reviewed the MVME Pi Maroni base. This is a undercard or under hat that sits underneath the Raspberry Pi and allows you to attach one M2 MVME drive. Recently, Pi Maroni has launched an upgraded version of this called the Duo. Now, as the name reflects, it's going to allow us to attach two MVME drives. There are some differences and right away, I want to point out the most notable one. And that's the fact that you cannot NOT install an operating system that's going to be able to boot from the NVMe drives on the Duo. Now you can install an operating system and boot it directly from the drive on the original base. The reason for that is because when we have one single drive, we can connect that directly to the PCI. But with the Duo, we're splitting it using a packet splitter or what we call a multiplexer. Now, unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi firmware does not yet support the ability to boot when it's behind a multiplexer. Now this may be coming in an update, it may not be coming in an update. But what you really need to take away from this is if you're trying to boot the OS off of the NVMe, the Duo is not going to do it. And unfortunately, you're going to have the one disk on the original base that's going to allow you to do that. But you do need to check the compatibility. I would go on the Pi Maroni website if you're using just the base model, the single drive model, and make sure that you are getting one of the recommended NVMe drives. It only works with a few, so make sure you're checking that. One of the advantages the Duo has is because it's behind the splitter or multiplex, it's going to give us greater compatibility with most NVMe drives. Although I still suggest you check the Pi Maroni website for the Duo just to be safe. The only other difference is that it's a little bit taller. The stack height and volume is just a little taller than the base when you put it all together. It just has higher standoffs to accommodate those new connections and two additional drives. But the actual footprint itself and the whole patterns for attaching it to the Raspberry Pi are the exact same. Now the reason I decided to use a Raspberry Pi is because one, I'm a nerd, and two, it's a lot more cost effective and way more versatile and provides way more utility than something like a standalone NAS. If you're gonna buy something comparable that's gonna be able to support NVMe drives, you're gonna be starting probably at $600 to $900 depending on which company you go with. Whereas the Raspberry Pi, we can put other programs on there, other pieces of software, even other servers. Now I would recommend using something like Docker or Kubernetes, for example, to containerize this if you're using multiple servers. But for right now, we're just going to install everything I'm going to use on the Raspberry Pi directly. Before we do that, we're gonna walk through the build, but this won't be a very detailed walkthrough. If you're looking for something detailed, check the link below or above, and this will get you to my original review. So you'll just see a quick fast forwarded version of me putting this together. Then afterwards, we'll get on the desktop and I'll walk you through some of the software that we're gonna be using to set up our NAS and our RAID environment. Now onto the software piece. And like all things Raspberry Pi, there is a plethora of different pieces of software and different methods you can use to set up RAID and SMB shares. I'm just gonna show you my preferred method that I've used in the past and it's been reliable for me. But first we have to do some housekeeping with the Pi itself. We need to make sure that it's seeing those drives. Then we need to update it and prep it just to get it ready for RAID. Then we're gonna install a piece of software called Webmin. Now Webmin is a pretty big piece of software in terms not in terms of footprint, but in terms of what it can do. And it's a great management tool for your Raspberry Pi that is basically going to give you a GUI so that you can manage it via a web browser on any computer on your network. We'll go ahead and install our RAID software, which is going to be MDADM. -M. So we install that, we'll actually use Webmin to set up our RAID array between those two NVMe drives. Once the Pi creates the RAID array, then we're going to mount that drive to a folder that we're going to use SMB to share to the greater network. So with that, let's get to clicking. Once you have your Raspberry Pi booted up, the first thing I would do would check to see if those drives are actually found by your system. And you can do that by going to the command line and typing in LSBLK. This will give you a list of all the different drives that are on the Raspberry Pi or connected to it. 
most notable of these two NVMe drives, which means they're connected. The next thing I would do is run sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Now all of these commands will be down below. So you'll notice me cut and pasting most of these things, but I will have them in the description so you can do the same. So once we do that, and I've already done this, it'll run through everything. And we want to edit the boot firmware config text. So we'll do sudo nano slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt. Now, once we're here and depending on what version you have, and really we shouldn't have to do this right now, but I just like to do it for good measure. You're going to want to paste this after the bottom all. And this is just going to enable the fastest speeds for our PCI port. Then control X hit Y. Yes. And that's written there. Now, once we are done with that, what I like to do is go to this command, which is going to allow sudo apt auto remove and sudo apt clean. And that's just going to clean up anything that it's installed that we may not need hit enter. Yes. That's going to clean it up. Now at this point you want to do sudo reboot and reboot your system. Now I've already done that. So it's all updated and we can move on to the next step. Before we install webmin, we need to install a couple different dependencies and you do that by running this set of commands. All we did there basically is install a couple different dependencies, most notable Perl. Now we're ready to install the software itself. We're going to use wget here and pull down the source. Now I am pulling down an older source just because I found it worked a little bit better. We'll update it later. We're going to install that package next. No, oh, we need to sudo that. In order to check that that's installed, we can actually open it up via a web browser. So let's grab a web browser. And you're going to want to type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. So in my case, it's right here and then port 10,000. It's going to give you this error just because of HTTPS and we don't have an SSL certificate. So go ahead and click that, go to advanced and there should be a proceed. Now we're going to log in with our username and password that we initially set up for our Pi. Okay, so now we see this is up and running and we're actually ready to install the RAID environment, Linux RAID MDIDM, so that we can manage it through web admin. So now that we know this is working, we can go ahead and minimize this. Back to your command line and we are ready to move on to setting up MDADM. In order to set up Linux RAID or MDADM, we need to issue this command. Now I did include a modifier in here, no installs recommends, and that's just not going to install the mail server that MDADM tries to install natively. It should have webmin installed as well as Linux RAID MDADM. Now let's just use a piece of software that I like to use just to check up on the drives to see what we may need to do with them to initialize them. In order to do that, I like to use something called gparted. Just type in sudo apt dash get install gparted. Once that's installed, you can go to your Raspberry Pi menu, go to system tools and gparted. gparted is just a utility that's going to allow us to see the different drives that we have on our systems in a GUI and manage those drives. So right now you can see I have both these drives unallocated. What you may need to do here is add a partition table. We'll go ahead and do that. Use MS-DOS, hit OK. And then we'll go to the next one and make sure you're selecting the NVMe drives, not the other drives. That's your SD card. So make sure we got both these. And these. Okay. We can minimize that. Let's go back to the command line and let's try to run FDIS to create a partition on one of these drives. 
but I'm going to go ahead and actually run LSBLK just so that I have the correct NVMe naming conventions. And then we'll use FDIS. So this is the N10N1. Once you do that, you're going to come up to these prompts and you need to put in the following. N for a new partition, P for the primary, one, this one default partition. The default here is okay, 2048. And then let's move this over a little bit. And then this default, it prompts you, I just grab this, cut and paste it, right click, copy, paste, enter. And then we need to write this, so I'm gonna hit W. All right, that should collect local and repartition the drive. Now we're going to look at the other drive and do the same thing. We did zero and one. Now we're going to do one and one. And we'll just repeat that process. Now we need to make a directory and a mount point for both those drives to point to. And in order to do that, first we're gonna make a directory. So sudo mkdir dash p forward slash mnt forward slash and you can name it whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm gonna name it yt. So that made our directory. Right now we've just opened up our web browser to our webmin install. You'll go down to hardware, Linux RAID, pit RAID 1, create RAID device. This is gonna allow us to select what partitions that we wanna use. And we're gonna use these two NVMe drives. Chunk size default, RAID level one, persistent, super block, yes. You can pretty much leave all this on its default. Now the initialization of the device is gonna take some time. We're talking about a few hours for this to run. Once that is complete, what we need to do is actually make the drive MD0, which is our RAID drive, ext4 format. In order to do that, what we need to do is simply issue this command. So what we're doing here is we're making an ext4 formatted drive out of the MD0. Now we're ready to mount this drive, MD0, to the file we created, in my case, yt. So now we should have the MD0 mounting to the YT. Let's take a look at whether or not it's doing that. Mount YT, free space, 1.8 terabytes. So it did take care of that mount. Now remember, this is both of those drives just acting as one. So we're just gonna have a complete backup by using RAID. But in order to be able to create things in here, for example, if I try to create a folder inside here, my permission is going to be denied. So we need to take care of that as well. In order to do that, what we're going to do is navigate to where that lives. And I like to go to sudo bash. That's gonna get us into the bash account with super admin user so that we don't have to use sudo. Do ls, let's do cd, there's our web admin. Let's do cd slash, and we should be able to go mnt. Okay, now we're in that MNTD LS and we see YouTube. So what we're going to do is now set the permissions. Once we're in the mount directory, we're going to issue a command chmod dash uppercase R777 and we will do YT. So that should set our permissions so that now we should be able to go back over YT and we should be able to now new file, we can create and we can edit and we can delete. Did not let me delete. Here. Okay, there we go. So that is just setting the permissions and that's gonna help us not only just for managing it, but also when we move into the SMB share. Once that's done, go back over to your command. I'll open up a new one. And we need to edit the FS tab file. And the reason we're doing that is just so that when it reboots, it mounts to that folder. So if I look at LSBLK, you now will notice that I have this drive and this drive both mapped to MD0 and they're mounted to YT. In order for this to be persistent after reboot, we need to edit the FS tab. So in order to do that, I'm gonna do sudo nano etc forward slash fs tab 
Once we are here, we need to add in this one line below the other ones. So hit, whoops, go down here and paste this in. And we're going to change this one from the example that I'm using to YT. So dev dash MD zero, which is your rate array mount it to YouTube using EXT. Well, YT stands for YouTube to EXT defaults, no time, zero one control X, Y and enter. Now this is going to be persistent when we reboot. And then the last thing we're going to do is create a Samba share. We need to first install Samba. So we'll use this command and then we'll go through and install Samba. Now we already have set the permissions so that we can read, write and edit and delete to our shared folder. And we did that earlier just so that we could manage it. But now we're going to be using it for SMB or Samba. Once we've installed Samba, we need to edit our SMB conf and we need to go all the way down to the bottom. And at the very bottom, we need to cut and paste from down below a couple lines here and we'll make some changes. So we're going to name this YT. I need to change this to where my drive is and that is YT as well. I'm making it writable. Yes. I'm creating that mass 777, which lines up to our permissions to directory mask as well. And I don't want it available to the public. So control X, Y enter. Now we should have the Samba set up, but we do need to do a couple more things. First and foremost, let's restart SMB. Now that we have that started, we need to define a password for our SMB user so we can connect to it from another machine. In this case, I've changed this to Hill, which is my username. You might be the default Pi, but you want to change this to the user that you're using currently or that you intend to use on the Raspberry Pi. In my case, it's Hill. I'll type in a password, hit enter, and it says add user Hill, and that's done. From here, we should be able to go over to our regular computer. We'll take a look to see if it's actually shared. Okay, now I'm on another computer. It's actually a Windows computer. So in Windows, go to network. Go up to the toolbar, put backslash, backslash, and then the IP address of your Pi. Now this might have you log in. I've already logged in. It'll just be a pop-up box and you need to put in the username as well as the password that you set up when we were going through the initialization of the SMB service. Here you can see YouTube or YT is there and I should be able to create in here as well. New folder. And we'll name this archive. All right. So you can see this is through SMB. I can access it from any of my computers on my network. Okay. Now we're back over on the Pi and we just want to make sure that we see that directory that we created the archive or the folder in the windows case. So what we're going to do is just check that it made its way over to the Pi from creating it over on the PC, which just means that our network share is working. So we'll go CD forward slash MNT forward slash YT. Then we'll issue the command LS to list the contents. And you can see there that directory of that folder archive is in fact there. So SMB is working. So now that we verify that the directory is there, we can also take one last look LS BLK. And you'll notice that we have both of these drives mounted to mount YT and they're rated. So these will be our raid ones. It'll treat it as one drive, but it's actually backing up or creating a copy to the other drive. Well, that about wraps it up. You now have a personal NAS built on a Raspberry Pi using the Pi Maroni Base Duo. That's going to give you two NVMe drives and we rated them. That's pretty cool, huh? If you made it this far, I greatly appreciate the watch. If you have any questions about this process, please just put some comments down below. I'll do my best to respond to them in a timely manner. Now, if you would, please hit that like button. It helps me out a lot and consider subscribing. I'm Hill Phantom. I'll see you next time.